Hey, what's going on guys? Mike here and today we're finally setting up the 33 gallon long aquarium here in the living room. I'm excited to do it because I only have one tank out here so far, Shrimp Mountain, and I'm really excited to be able to look at something new. So as we go through the scape and as we build this aquarium, keep names in mind because I haven't come up with a name for this tank yet, even based off of what the aquascape is gonna look like or at least I think what it's gonna look like. So make sure to drop your suggestions down in the comments comments and let's go ahead and get started. Before we begin laying in substrate and talking about, you know, what we're going to be doing that's sort of unique for this build, I want to go ahead and touch on the tank itself. This again is a 33 long aquarium. It's 48 inches long. It's about 12 and a half inches tall and about 12 and a half inches deep. And so obviously the big thing with this tank is that we remove the rim. For a tank that's only, you know, 12 inches tall, 12 and a half inches high, uh, having a rim Imagine 1.5 inches of blocked view here and another 1.5 inches of blocked view here. That reduces our ability to see what's in the tank quite a bit. And you know, again, we're, we don't have a lot here. So we're, by removing the rim, we gain about three inches of visibility. And to me, based on just aquariums overall and, and particularly the scape that we're gonna be doing here, having that visibility is super important. So what we did to be extra safe was add a piece of quarter inch glass as a brace here, right in the middle. You'll notice that I already have the light on the aquarium to help with illuminating the substrate and the addition of plants and things like that. Uh, so I will mention really quick, this is a 48 inch Phoenix Planted Plus 24-7 SE fixture that Phoenix was nice enough to hook me up with here and you know I'm really really liking these fixtures. I reach out to Phoenix to do this. They didn't reach out to me and so you know if that says anything these are lights that I just I love to use and I'm going to be using them on pretty much all of my tanks. Make sure to check for links for the light as well as all the other stuff that we use in this project guys. You can find it down there. Go check the stuff out if you want to learn a little bit more about those individual items that we're going to be using. So Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with our substrate. So for this build, I'm gonna be using the same substrate combination that I used over in Shrimp Mountain, the tank that we set up recently. And that of course is going to be a bottom layer of earthworm castings. This is gonna be our source of organic nutrients, okay, as well as our inorganic nutrients that our bacteria are going to make for us. And then we're going to be capping that with Akadama. It's going to retain, hopefully, retain all of those nutrients that the soil provides. And, you know, this is something, this is a combination that I'm really starting to like. You have a source of nutrients, and then you have a top layer that can act as a capture for those nutrients and provide it to your plants. So all I do is start out by just pouring in the earthworm castings, going through with my hands and breaking up any big clumps that are in there. Uh, this stuff, when you compare it to soil, it doesn't really have uh, you know, any bark or anything like that. You don't need to fish out big wood chips or anything, so that's another plus. But I'm just gonna be spreading this out throughout the tank um, and making sure that I have, at this point, something close to about an inch, okay? Now this is an inch of dry, earthworm castings, when we wet it down, it'll probably lose about half of its volume. It'll compact and it'll shrink down to somewhere, you know, anywhere from a quarter inch to a half an inch. And for me, you know, I'm not gonna overdo it with this layer. I don't think that it's necessary. I also don't think that there's any real con to adding, you know, too much. Obviously you don't wanna add like five or six inches of this stuff to an aquarium like this, but I don't think even, you know, even adding a couple inches of this stuff when it's wet and compact would really cause any problems. Once I'm happy with the soil layer, now I'm gonna take my little spray bottle here, or you could take a hose, you know, if it's more convenient, and I'm gonna wet down this soil. And so using this thing is going to take a while. Um, the hose might be an easier option, especially like when you're filming, but I'm just gonna go through and hit all the corners and make sure that we get this soil fairly compacted. This stuff can hold a lot of water, guys. So, you know, be patient, but try not to overdo it. I never like to, you know, create any standing water when I do this. I try and get, you know, very close. I definitely want to saturate the medium, but I don't want to have, you know, any big puddles sticking up here. So I think I'm at a point where I have it pretty good. And it looks like I didn't, you know, I might have mentioned the amount earlier, but, you know, we ended up with, you know, a quarter of an inch, 
maybe a half an inch in some points here in the front and then you know maybe in the back it ended up being a little bit higher but I don't even think we're getting to like an inch maybe an inch in this back right corner but you know I don't think you really need a lot here and you know the end result I guess will be the proof of that but I'm just saying don't don't think you need to add a ton of soil to get a ton of plant growth especially when we use a medium like this that's going to retain these nutrients and feed our plants further speaking of our next layer of substrate let's go ahead and talk about and add our akadama so this is a hard fired clay that's mined in japan it's used most notably for bonsai trees but it actually makes a really great substrate for aquariums it's an active substrate it's going to help to reduce the ph kh gh basically the water hardness it's something that shrimp breeders use and love and we're going to be using it in this tank today when i add it i do it the same way as we did the earthworm castings obviously i don't have to break up large clumps or anything but i put it in and i smooth it out now this time i'm thinking about my aquascape okay where do i want to have hills where do i you know do i want any steep features you know in the hardscape you know where am i going to put rocks where am i going to put trees and that really all just depends on you know what you're doing and so here I'm thinking about, you know, I'm thinking about having a feature here on the right. And so I'm, you know, I'm putting a little bit more here. I'm building it up. And the height of this stuff, you could, you could fill the entire aquarium up with this stuff. It's not going to cause any big problems. Shrimp Mountain had a ton of this stuff in the back. I think, you know, over two thirds of the way up to the top of that uh, 15 gallon tank. So no worries there. So now that I have all the Akadama in you know, the right places where I think I want everything to be, let's turn around here and let's take a look at the main feature of the hardscape. Here we have a couple of awesome bonsai trees from bonsaidriftwood.com. I reached out to them and said, hey guys, I need to have a couple of your trees. I think it's exactly what I want in one of my scapes. So they were nice enough to hook it up with two of these trees and guys, these things are awesome they're actually made from like three different types of driftwood and you know they're they're not real dead bonsai trees guys these are completely manufactured they have rocks down here at the bottom that hold them down you don't need to uh, you know float these or try and get them to sink you don't need to you know put them out in a tub and get them to waterlog at least these two pieces they sink right away so that's a huge plus and if you look you know you can see the different kinds of wood and material they use to build these things they're super intricate and i think they're just amazing i recommend you guys go check them out there's a link for their website down in the description uh, I, I mean instant aquascaping tool absolutely love this stuff so what we're going to be doing is placing these in the aquarium and you know again thinking about how we want the scape to look where we want to put these things and of course you know what plants are we going to put on these trees because we're going to make them look super super realistic hopefully so i'm really excited to to get to that point but we have a few things that we need to do before that. Now, the next step is going to be starting the immersed growth phase of this tank. We're gonna be using Glosso here in this tank as the main carpeting plant. And I think at this point, most of the tank is gonna be Glosso, and then we'll have some plants around the trees. These are portion cups, okay? So that means that they're not really rooted, okay? They might have a couple roots coming off of the bottom, but the big thing is that you take a plant like this and you just put it right into your aquarium. Even if you do have a lot of CO2, a lot of the times this plant is just gonna melt off. And so to try and prevent that, what we're gonna be doing is adding it to the tank with no water and over the next month or two months or however long, it starts to grow a really good root system. So by the time that we fill the tank up, and we add our CO2 and we get things rolling, hopefully it'll give it the best opportunity to do well in our aquarium. So to add the Glosso, I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna pick out the portions of it that look the best, okay? This has been, these portions have been sitting in water for a day or two now. It all still looks pretty good, but I'm still gonna go through and I'm gonna cut off, you know, a few nodes down so where the plant isn't super tall. Um, and then I'm gonna just place them around in the aquarium here with my forceps. Here I'm just putting them like an inch apart, you know, a square inch apart, some a little bit closer. Some that I put in, it's, you know, one stem, other times it's three or four stems um, and you know there's really there's really no way that you have to do this so I'm just gonna go out I'm gonna fill it in a little bit and then call it good 
So now you can see we have pretty much all the Glosso from all those cups in the tank spread out pretty evenly. You know, some clumps are bigger than others. We're gonna go ahead and leave the trees in. And you know what, I got to thinking about it and I decided, guys, I think we need to add some of this hair grass, some of the immersed growth setup stuff that I had uh, that you guys saw in that previous video. Some of it, you know, is kind of dying a little bit, but we're gonna go ahead and take out some of the hair grass and add it around our trees here. And you know what? I decided let's throw in some Lobelia cardinalis as well. I think we're gonna go ahead and add those around the base of the tree to give it a little bit more character and see how it looks. Once I have all the plants in place, now I'm gonna go ahead and grab my sprayer once again and just wet everything down really good. Next, we need to add saran wrap over the top of the aquarium so that we lock in all the moisture and our plants don't dry out over time. We're of course gonna need to run our light fixture which is sitting on top of the aquarium. We're gonna run this Phoenix on the max setting for about 16 hours a day. And we can do that basically because the plants in here have all the access to nutrients and carbon that they need to grow. And we of course don't have to worry about any algae growth. So running the light for this long amount of time or a seemingly long period period is totally fine. It's gonna help the plants grow even faster. We're about one week into the Immerse setup, guys, and I just wanted to touch base on what I've been doing and the results so far. So here is what I've noticed. One, it's kind of hard to see because we have all this condensation, but the lobelia has started to put out some new growth. So you can see the new green leaves there at the top. Those are new growth. And the other thing I've noticed is that while I can't tell, you know, until I go back and edit this footage, if visually there's more Glosso, I'm not convinced that there is, there are some roots that are starting to pop up in here. And so I'll try my best to focus, but this condensation is gonna be killer. There's some right in here. And you know, if you go around and you look at all the different patches, I don't think you guys can see that, but there is, I mean, there's like a trail of new roots that are poking out right there. Very hard to see. Uh, but if you look around at each patch, you can see that there's, that, you know, there's roots starting to come out. So that's a really good sign. I'm excited to see that. Um, you'll also notice that some of the plants have more growth that is, you know, upright and pointed towards the light than others. And so, you know, we'll just keep going. I think, you know, two weeks is definitely not gonna be enough and you know, probably even a month. If we wanted to do this right, we would do two months, but we'll see how long I can wait this out. Here we are actually just a couple days later, guys, so I think we're like seven or eight days into the, the process of growing things immersed, and you can see we now have our first instance of mold growing on the Glosso. So this isn't an uncommon thing to happen, um, but right away, you know, you can tell that it's localized just to one grouping of plants. Everything else looks okay. So what I'm gonna do is just reach in here and pull it out to try and isolate the problem. I wanna get this mold out before it starts to sporulate and potentially spread throughout the aquarium. Here's another look at it. So you guys can see, obviously, that's not normal. So we wanna get that out. We'll see if it continues to spread in the aquarium. I'm obviously crossing my fingers that it doesn't because that would be a huge problem. We're now three weeks into this process and you can definitely tell that there's been a lot of growth going on with the Glosso. We'll get an aerial shot of the Glosso and if we zoom in on it, you can just see that it's starting to spread all over the place. And you know, especially here in the back, it's filling in quite nicely. In the front, we're still a little patchy. Haven't had really too many more instances of mold. I had a little bit more down here. It pulled out a, a little piece down here. Um, but other than that, things are going really good. So I'm getting impatient and I don't wanna wait you know, another month or two months for this to fill in. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add in some new plugs of Glosso to attempt to get this thing going a little bit faster because I really don't wanna keep you guys waiting on this video and I myself don't wanna wait on filling this thing up. I wanna do it as soon as possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill in some spots and hopefully we'll only have to wait like two or three more weeks, probably you know tops one more month before we can fill this tank up. Here we are now just over one month into the dry start 
and things are going pretty good. I mean, the carpet for the most part here in the middle is doing really good. It's almost to where I want it, but you'll notice a patch here and a patch here. And those are two locations where I've been having more than a few instances of mold issues. And so I've been trying to control the amount of spraying I'm doing in here. I'm not really adding much more water to the system at all, but I'm still having these problems. And so if we can zoom down in here, you can see there's some new mold starting to take over those plants. And these are actually healthy plants. So my theory of the mold only affecting damaged or plants that pretty much weren't gonna make it, uh, I think that theory is, is out. And I think this is a mold that can take over and kill healthy plants. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna spray it with a little bit of 3% hydrogen peroxide here I have in this bottle. So we're just gonna use a little bit. I don't wanna overdo it. And I think that's gonna help the problem. Just a few sprays in the affected areas and we'll see if this helps. The hydrogen peroxide ended up working to an extent. So if we look here in the tank, we can see that, uh, you know, here's some areas where there was quite a bit of mold, the brown spots, and that's where I sprayed. I sprayed, uh, you know, a couple shoots, um, you know, once a day for a couple days and what would happen is the mold would come back. Um, it wouldn't come back you know, as strong and it wouldn't come back in every place, but I mean, it didn't 100% work to kill the mold. So, you know, as we look at the tank right now, this, the middle portion here looks really good, but then we have this bare patch, which is a result from the mold, and then a little bare patch over here. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sprinkle in some Akadama here where we have this standing water on each side to try and soak some of it up, uh, you know, just to try and prevent, you know, as much moisture from being in this. I'm gonna leave this open for a little bit to dry it out just a little bit. And then we're gonna try and plant one more time in these areas. I don't wanna wait another month for this scape. So we're gonna plant it. We're gonna wait, you know, maybe one more week, hopefully keep the mold away. And then we're gonna fill this tank up. We got a code red, guys. I came back from being away for a couple days only to find that mold had taken out the lobelia in the back here. Those plants are totally toast. And I'm gonna have to pull them out here in a second. Luckily, you know, nothing too crazy else happened. The stuff that we recently planted here and here, it looks okay. There's no mold growing around those portions, but uh, I I'm just calling it. We're gonna go ahead and fill up the tank today and finish the scape. I think, uh, I don't think there's any point in waiting any longer. And honestly, it'll be kind of interesting to see if, you know, how this stuff does, the newly planted Glosso does compared to the stuff that's already established. Maybe it'll grow just fine and I didn't need to take so much time to do this. But by filling up the tank and, you know, getting things going, we should uh, not have any more problems with this mold. I almost forgot guys, one more thing. We need to finish our trees. We put them into the aquarium with nothing on them during the dry start because I wanted to just kind of see how things would go. Uh, but we need to add some plants to them, of course. So what we're gonna be doing is adding Anubias Nana Petite to them. Uh, it's kind of typical to add moss to these trees. It looks really good when you add, you know, Java moss, Christmas moss, pretty much any type of moss. But here we're gonna be using the Anubias. I think it's gonna just complement everything a little bit better. I think it's gonna work well in the end. And you know, hey, it's just an experiment in the end, right? So what I'm gonna do is just take a bunch of these Nana Petite and put them all over throughout the really small and intricate branches that are up here in the top of the tree. I'm just gonna wedge them in between with some forceps. I'm not gonna super glue them or do anything like that. We're just gonna kind of push them into place. When that's all done, I'm gonna put the two trees back into the tank, sort of in the same position that they were, and then we're ready to fill it up. While the tank is filling up, let's go ahead and talk about the other things that we need to do to our tank before it is complete. Uh, the first thing we need to do is hook up our AquaClear 30. This is the filtration that we're gonna be using. Just a simple hang on back filter, nothing special. Uh, but then the other thing that is probably the most important is we need to get our CO2 going because this Glosso, I think is really gonna need a ton of CO2 in order to, to do well. So for that, we have a paintball CO2 tank, an individual system. Um, Aquatech, of course, was nice enough 
to hook me up with a paintball regulator. This is the same kind of setup that I have over on Shrimp Mountain. And so we're gonna be using this guy for our CO2. And to start, because I don't have a canister filter or anything, I'm just gonna be using uh, one of these plain diffusers. So uh, links to Aquatech products in the description as well as everything else that we're using on the tank. I'm gonna be using a cheap Sun Sun Wave Maker in this tank. This is the JVP 110. This is the one that I always use. Because the tank is four feet long, I think it's gonna be good to have you know, some good flow in here. And so this little guy is perfect for a four foot long tank. Um, and I think it'll work really well here in the 33. As the tank is filling, I'm checking out the Colosso carpet. Obviously the newer stuff that I put in is taller, you know, it didn't have time to grow the way that all of this stuff does. So it doesn't really look that great. I also added some more in the back there where we had the molding labelia. And so, you know, I don't know, it's gonna take time for this to, you know, it's gonna take even more time for this to kind of balance out and sort of look the same. I don't know, I'm really just crossing my fingers and praying that the Colosso carpet just doesn't die in, in the first week. So I think that's the first big thing is to get through, you know, that period of time and feel comfortable with the plant. Uh, and so again, to do that, we're just gonna be dumping a ton of CO2 into this tank because that's the biggest difference uh, when we go from an immersed to a submerged environment. So I'm not worried about the lobelia. This stuff is, you know, pretty easy to grow as long as it has a good substrate. And the Nana Petite, you know, stuff's bulletproof. So we'll just see what happens. I'm interested to see how this, you know, the newer Glosso does, you know? I'm interested to see how it'll transform and if it'll kind of do the same thing like it did here or if I'm gonna to have to trim it way back. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Now that everything is hooked up and into position, let's go over it real quick. So we got the hang on back filter right here, modified it a little bit, and we got the curly bamboo in there. I think that, you know, when you step back and look at it, it looks pretty cool. Might add a few more and, you know, I like the placement of the filter there. We'll put a background on this tank eventually so you won't be able to see that. But uh, yeah, and you know, I like it so far. Uh, let's see, we got the pump over here, the wave maker, and I'm not 100% sure, I might swap it out for something that's not as powerful, it's, you know, it's not a powerful pump to start with, but I don't know, we'll see, when we put the fish in this tank in the next episode of the bonsai tree tank, uh, you know, that might dictate whether or not we swap that out for something a little less powerful or we just leave it. Uh, we have the CO2 in place, and we're diffusing it not in the most efficient way. We might change that later. I might just change the entire filter setup of this tank, go with a canister filter with some lily pipes and a um, inline diffuser for that canister filter. But, you know, that would help us to diffuse CO2 a little bit better, but it would require, you know, getting another filter and doing a little bit more work. So we're just gonna play it by ear for now. You can see we've got the bubble counter cruising over here. I want to put as much CO2 into this tank as I can because I don't want this Glosso carpet to die. I took too long to try and get it to grow. So we got the new stuff here that's, you know, taller than the other stuff, but we'll see, we'll see how it does. I'm gonna get way back here so you guys can see the tank in its entirety. I really like the tree. I really like the contrast of the darker Anubius with the lighter Glosso carpet. Let's get in in there. I think that's really, I think it looks pretty good, but the only thing is that looking at the tank, I mean, this was the feel that I wanted to have. I wanted to have a lot of open area here because I'm gonna pack this with a schooling fish. And, but you know, as I look at it, I'm kind of thinking that it would be pretty sweet if we had another tree over here. So if we built the substrate up a little bit and we had something else to look at over there that might be pretty cool that might round out the scape and give it a little bit i don't know just i think it might look a little bit better but we're going to be patient we're going to let the carpet kind of do its thing 
and see how things go. We're gonna put the fish in and then we'll decide whether or not we wanna add some more trees here. That's the best thing about aquascaping, guys, is that you know when you set up your tank, it doesn't have to be the final scape. You know, and if you've been watching me for a while, you know that I get antsy and I want to switch my scapes up and change things. And I think, you know, that's something that everybody should do, you know, at some point. Rarely do you make an aquascape where everything is perfect and you like, you know, everything about it. Sometimes that does happen and that's great, but I mean, that's kind of the cool thing for me at least when it comes to scaping is giving yourself, you know, setting up a tank and giving yourself the opportunity to add things later, to change things later and make it easy for you to do that. And so in this tank, we have, you know, a really easy opportunity to change things. We can just boop, set in some new trees and that would totally change the feel of the scape. I think that's gonna do it for today's video, guys. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like, share it with somebody that you know maybe you know that's kind of thinking about doing a planted tank but needs a little bit of motivation to get them over the edge. Maybe this video is just what they need. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new to keep up with all the new tanks that we're setting up over here. And make sure you have notifications turned on so you know the exact moment when we upload the next video that's gonna be putting fish into this tank. I'm sure you guys are excited for that. I am super excited for that. Thanks again so much for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.